One is the uh, partially dissociate, or what a weak base is, is that of course it partially dissociates. Mm -hmm. Now these are kind of weird though. Yeah. We should talk about that because most weak bases are actually not hydroxides. No, there are a few, like your group two hydroxides, say magnesium hydroxide. Well, let's do one of those first. Calcium hydroxide. So calcium hydroxide is yeah. a weak a weak base, pardon me. Mm -hmm. And when it dissociates, it's also typically found as a solid. Now notice that the key thing is I'm gonna draw is the double, double arrow. arrow. Ca positive two, aqueous plus, this will be two hydroxides, aqueous. So that's a, that's a weak base. Yeah, and we call these the dissociation reactions. Right. But the more common type of weak base mm -hmm. are actually the nitrogens. We talked about that briefly about the tongue in the last. Yeah, with the nitrogen there. So a common weak base is ammonia. Now, the thing that confuses students about this is, of course, you have to produce hydroxide to make mm -hmm. it a base. But there's no O's in no. H3. No, but when, uh, to have a base, just like an acid, it needs to be dissolved in water. So we're actually going to put the water in the right. reaction. And notice how I write water. I read it as H-O-H. Ho-ho. Yeah, ho-ho. Yeah, like, ho-ho. I'm going to draw my double arrow, and what's going to happen is this hydrogen is going to connect with the ammonia and make uh, something we've seen before, ammonium. ammonium, and then that kicks out the hydroxide. Right, because if you take an H off HOH, you're left with OH. OH. And so the most common type of weak bases are actually these nitrogen-bearing compounds where they kind of steal, not just kind of, they do, they steal a hydrogen from the water molecule and uh, then leaves the hydroxide. So there's lots of yep. these. And we're going to give special names to these things here in, I think, the next lesson. No, I think we should do it now because I don't think it's done in the next lesson. These are called, these uh, NH3, now this is called ammonia right here, mm -hmm. A-M-M-O-N-I-A. But as a group, they're called what? Amines. So amines are these weak bases that have nitrogen in it. Yep. In fact, the word am has to do with nitrogen, isn't it? That kind of a, it's like the Greek for. Oh, I don't know. I'd have to look that I up. I think that's right. So that's where it comes from. I'm pretty sure. Let's do a quick little video clip that kind of illustrates all this, and we'll finish with that. I want to talk about the difference between a strong acid and a weak acid. So I have a, uh, a molecular model that represents hydrochloric acid, HCl. And HCl is a strong acid, one of the six strong acids that exist, or there's more than that, but um, for our purposes. So what that means is it completely dissociates. So if I take this HCl, which typically is found as a gas, as I've symbolized here in the chemical equation, if I drop it into water, it will dissociate completely into hydrogens and chlorides. That means it's going to break apart into hydrogens and chlorides. Now, if you notice over here, I've got a whole bunch of HCLs. When I say completely dissociate, that means all of them will dissociate. So I would break apart this one. So what they look like is, well, all the yellows, all the hydrogens, are broken apart from the H or from the chlorides, and they're completely dissociated. Now, this is actually not the way they look because they would all be mixed together. They'd all be mixed together and be randomly placed in the compound. Now I want to talk about weak acids. Now weak acids, the, the uh, important definition to understand with the weak acids, they are substances that partially dissociate. That means break apart in ions. So here I have an example of a weak acid from a molecular model. It's acetic acid, HC2H3O2, and so the yellow here represents the hydrogen, and the red is the acetate. It should be more complex than this, but that's close enough. And so what it's going to do is it's going to partially dissociate. That means that only some of them, when added to water, will break apart into hydrogens and acetates. So I'm going to break apart one, and frankly, that's probably about right. What's going to happen? Most of them stay together as HC2H3O2, acetic acid, and a very few break apart. Usually, it's one in a hundred, maybe one in five out of a hundred, so it's like one percent or five percent, sometimes less than even one percent. So this is an illustration of a weak acid that partially dissociates.